Hi, Alice. Oh, hi, Trix. I just came down to return this cup I borrowed from you. Oh, thanks. Say, Alice, do you have a little extra cream? I ran short. Oh, sure. Help yourself. Thanks. la da dee da dee da dee da da dee da dee Oh, listen, I don't want to take this whole thing. Well, just take as much as you want. Oh, thanks. Uh, say, can I borrow this cup again? Oh, sure, you always return it. <laughs> what are you doing, Alice? Well, I bought Ralph a new suit of underwear, and I'm taking the sleeve out. Well, why don't you buy the sleeveless kind? Well, Ralph just wants me to take the right sleeve off because he says it's hot on the bus. <laughs> well, uh, isn't it just as hot for his left arm? Oh, no, that's the one that he leaves hanging out the window. Oh. Gee. The leftovers would make swell sweaters for Doc soon. <laughs> Listen, Trix, as long as the boys are going bowling tonight, how about you and me taking in a movie? Good. There's a terrific one down at that foreign movie house. It's called um, Passionel on Army. Oh, a German film. Yeah. Oh, great. All right, I'll pick you up right as soon as I get through feeding Ralph his dinner. Swell, I'll see you later. Ralph. Okay. Ooh, nearly forgot the cream. Bye. Bye. See you later. Yeah. Hi, honey, I'll have your dinner fixed for you in a minute. Don't bother, I'm not hungry. <laughs> you mean you're going to go bowling without eating? I'm not going bowling. But you and Ed go bowling every Tuesday night. <clears throat> That's right. Every Tuesday night I go bowling. And every Wednesday morning I go to work. <laughs> Tomorrow is Wednesday morning, but I'm not going to work. What do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. I've been fired. Fired? Yes, fired. Nine years I've been driving a bus for that firm. Nine years. And what happens to me? I drive the bus into the depot tonight. The guy from the supply room comes up to me and he says, Grandin, turn in your uniform tomorrow. You're not driving a bus for us anymore. Oh, I can't believe it. You can't believe it. I can't believe it. Nine years slaving for him and this is the thanks I get. Oh, boy, getting up every morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. No holidays. Working three Sundays out of four. All kinds of weather. Blizzards, heat spells, hailstorms. Taking all kinds of abuse. Old women yelling at me. Drunks trying to get on the bus without paying their fare. Cab drivers cutting me off. And whenever another bus driver was sick, I had to work double time. And this is the thanks I get. Don't worry, honey. You'll get another job. I'll get another job, sure, but never a good one like this one. <laughs> Ralph, don't get so upset about it. You're young and healthy. There are plenty of other jobs. Plenty of jobs, huh? Plenty of jobs, huh? <laughs> I read, read the help wanted column on the way home tonight. I'll show you the jobs there are. Here. Drill press operator wanted, $70 a week. Learn while you earn. Here's another one. Tool and die worker. Good opportunity for the right party. Well, what's wrong with any of those jobs? Nothing, except they're all listed under help wanted women. There's not one job in here for a man. Listen, Ralph, while you're waiting to get something for yourself, maybe I could get a job to help out. No, oh, no, you don't. No, you don't, Alice. I told you once, I told you a thousand times. When I married you, you were never going to work again in your life. Honey, it won't be for long. I don't care how long it is, Alice. I got my pride. Before I see you go to work, I'd rather see you starve. <laughs> we'll get along somehow until something comes up. Just have to live on our savings, that's all. Swell, that'll take care of tonight, but what are we going to do in the morning? <laughs> no, we'll just have to change our style of living, that's all. Have to move out of here into a cheap apartment. <laughs> get rid of this furniture, get some secondhand stuff. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got an idea. For the time being, we can move in with your folks. What do you mean? Just a minute ago when I said I'd go and get a job, you told me you had too much pride. And I meant it. While you're with your folks, I won't even let you help wash the dishes. <laughs> How can you even think a thing like moving in with my folks? You haven't exactly gotten along with my father, you know. Do you want to know something? Do you realize that not once in the last five years have you even let me invite them over here for dinner? Let's have them here tonight. <laughs> we can break the news to them during dessert. The answer is no. 
All right, Alice, what are we gonna do? Well, the first thing you can do is stop being so panicky. We've only been out of work a half an hour. You'll get something. I'll get something, huh? Sure, I'll get something. When, how, where? You know, I haven't got the best education in the world to have my ticket jobs. I only went to the sixth grade. I should have went through high school and then through college. <laughs> that wouldn't have done any good anyway. That would have even made things worse. So what do you mean? How do you think I would have felt a college graduate getting fired by a bus company? <laughs> Boy, it's a pretty rough thing when you've had a job that long and you get fired. Now listen. You don't know what way to turn. Honey, with an attitude like that, you're never gonna get a job. Remember, you got a lot of friends. That's what they're for. Tell them that you're out of work. Maybe one of them will be able to help you get another job. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not telling my friends I'm out of work. Have them standing around saying, poor Ralph, giving me that phony sympathy. Ah! Well, I think that's carrying your pride a little bit too far. It is, huh? Well, that's the way I want it. And remember that. I don't want any of my friends to know that I'm out of work. Just remember that. All right. When I get another job, I'll tell them I quit the bus company because, well, I wanted to advance. <laughs> I lost my job. <laughs> they fired me. You kidding? No, he's not, Ed. It's true. Well, it's true. Oh. All right. I'm done. Finished. Through. Over. Wait a minute now. Don't let it get you down now. I mean, that's not the spirit. This is a time where you got to keep your chin up. You got to smile. Come on, Ruffy boy. Give that a smile. Come on, boy. Come on. You give me a bigger <laughs> smile than that. That boy, a little bigger. That's it. That's the way I want to see you. Even if it takes a year to get a job. <laughs> Even if you never get a job. How do you expect me to smile when you're talking like that? Only trying to cheer you up? Man, cheer me up. A fat lot I got to smile about. Today I'm fired, tomorrow I'm forgotten. They probably won't even remember what I look like. That's all right. You go there tomorrow morning, you apply for another job. <laughs> you are a mental case. <laughs> all right, come on, let's go bowling. and we'll be late. You don't think I can come bowl, bowl, bowling after what happened to me today? Ralph, that's right. It'll do you good to go bowling. Maybe you're right. I gotta get my mind off this. That's the way I like to hear you talk. That's the spirit. Come on, I wanna get home early. After all, you can sleep all morning. You ain't waking. <laughs> Stop acting so silly, huh? I'll let you know about it. I'll let you know about it. You don't know what it is to be fired after working for a company for nine years. It takes a lot out of a man's life, you know. Nine long years I worked for them. Now I'm through. Just through. <laughs> well, it doesn't make much difference. That's life, I guess. You work. When I think of the guy, the guy that fired me, J.J. Marshall, the president of the Gotham Bus Company, sitting there in his office ruining my life. If there was some way that I could get to him and tell him what I think of him, call him on the phone. <laughs> what chance have I got getting through his sturdy secretaries? Wait a minute. I got it. Get me some writing paper. Ralph, you're not going to write him a letter. I certainly am. I, I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him. Ralph, writing a letter is not going to solve anything. I'll get the writing paper myself. Butt out of this. There. You want to know why I'm staying? You want to know why I'm staying? After working nine years for that company, what have I got to show for it? This. 36 underwear sleeves. <laughs> Dirty bum. <laughs> Look, I'm too nervous to write. You write it and I'll tell you what to say. <laughs> Here, 
You dirty fuck. <laughs> Ain't that a little rough for a starter? <laughs> Maybe you're right. All right. Here, Mr. Marshall. That's better. You dirty <laughs> but a miserable lowlife. <laughs> you ought to turn in your membership card in the human race. <laughs> nice touch, nice touch. Thank you. <laughs> after firing me, after nine years of loyal service, I can truthfully say that you are the meanest man in the world. You dirty... <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything else to say. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Uh, maybe this would be a good spot to uh, throw in a hint about getting your job back again. <laughs> what with you? Are you an idiot or something? <laughs> Just sign it now. Respectfully yours. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> hey, uh, Ralph. <coughs> what? What's your boss's address? No. J.J. Uh, Marshall, Gotham Bus Company, 225 River Street, New York City. Okay. Here. Here's a stamp. Okay. Yeah. That's off your chest now. How about a little bull? Come on. I don't feel like pulling. You go ahead by yourself, and on the way over, mail that letter. All right, pal. Well, listen. Don't take it rough, will you? I mean, uh, maybe I can get a job uh, for you with me in the sewer. All you got to do is uh, pass the test. <laughs> what test? Can you float? <laughs> Will you get out of here? <laughs> he just went falling. And I told him to mail that letter. You're going to be awfully sorry you wrote that letter. You're going to be awfully sorry, huh? Nine years. Nine years! A long time out of a man's life. Nine years I've been on that bus run. I've made a lot of friends in those years on that bus. A lot of friends. Good friends. Kids. Kids all the way from kindergarten through high school. The little kids. They're the ones that gave me the fun. Little teeny weeny ones. They used to get in a bus and I let them sit on my lap and make believe they're driving a bus. Let them open and shut the door. When things were slow, I even let them punch the tickets and make the change. Those little kids knew everything about a bus. They knew exactly how to operate a bus. Now they're a young man going out into the world. <coughs> Wait a minute. It's probably one of those little brats that's taken my job. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Ralph. Hi, Alice. Look, you, I don't want any of your sympathy. What sympathy? I come here to tell you the news. You don't have to tell me the news. I already know it. I drove the bus into the depot. The supply guy comes up and says, turn in your uniform. You're not driving a bus anymore tomorrow. <laughs> what's so funny? What's the laugh at? I'll tell you what's funny. Sure, you ain't driving a bus tomorrow, but not because you've been fired. I was in Mr. Marshall's office this afternoon, and he told me, you've been promoted a traffic manager. <laughs> a traffic? That's right, Ralph. Congratulations. Well, I gotta be running home. It's getting a little late. Now, uh, don't forget to bring some cigars down at the depot tomorrow. From now on, you are an executive. <laughs> Good night, Alice. Good night. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Gee, Alice. An executive. I'm a big shot, honey. An executive. Okay. Get dressed. Get dressed, we're going out. We're going out, we're going to celebrate. But and from here on in, we're going to live. But Ralph... Hurry up, honey, get dressed. Ralph! <laughs> Alice! Stella! Stella! I've got to get Norton before he mails that letter. Only myself? 
yourself to blame. My mother warned me. You, you, you. There's no one but you, you, you. Everyone but... <laughs> There's no one but you, you, you. Everything, too, too. Tippy, tippy, tin, tippy, tin. Tippy, tippy, tin, tippy. Ooh. How do you like that? I forgot the mail Ralph's letter. Hey, pal, come here. What do you want? You don't wear mailboxes around here? Yeah, there's one right out front. Uh, do me a favor, will you mail it? Sure. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I'll make it up to you. I'll make it up to you. I'll try very hard not to litter the floor. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, buddy. Here. What, <laughs> Bart? That letter I gave you. Did you mail it? No, I didn't. You did? No. I can explain. You don't have to explain anything, pal. You just saved my life. Boy, let's celebrate. Well, you're happy, huh? Happy? I'll tell you how happy I am. Not that many I'm going to bowl with you, but after we finish bowling, I'm taking you out and buying you the biggest steak in the world. Well, I don't know what's making you act this way, but if you're happy, I'm happy. Don't uh, worry about it, pal. Let me have the letter. I haven't got it. What do you mean you haven't got it? Well, I mean, I gave it to somebody else to mail. You gave it to somebody else? Yeah. Who did you give it to mail? Well, uh, remember the guy you bumped into on the way here and, and uh, the letter dropped on the floor? That was the letter. No. Oh. And I picked it up and gave it back to him. Where's the letter box? Uh, on the front. I gotta get that guy before he mails the letter. How do you like that guy? He calls me a mental case. Steak you promised me. I changed my mind. Let's make it a pizza. We get one with the mushrooms, one with a hot zuz each. Will you shut up? <laughs> All right, we'll eat steak. <laughs> you leave me alone. Do you know what just happened to me? What? My world has come to an end. What? I didn't get that letter. What do you got to get the letter for? Did you think of something better to call the boss? <laughs> Miserable lowlife and dirty bum ain't bad, you know. <laughs> I'll have to explain to you. I wasn't fired. I was promoted. He made me the traffic manager. Congratulations. What are you congratulating me for? <laughs> After that guy reads the letter, I'm done. Through. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what to do if he fires you? What? Write him another nasty letter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you realize this is my whole life? I'm gone. You got to think of some way to get back that letter. Now, listen, don't, don't take it so much. Now, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe Mr. Marshall won't fire you. Take it easy. What do you mean he won't fire me? Are you crazy or something? When he reads that letter? If I called you a dirty bum and a miserable lowlife, wouldn't you get mad? Have I ever? <laughs> Fine, Merry Christmas. I'm going to spend. Yeah. We gotta right. think so. We All gotta right. get that sit, letter. Sit down. Think about now it. we know two things. That's right. The mailbox is in front of this place, and the letter is in the mailbox. That's right. And we gotta get the letter out of the mailbox. True, true. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You tap around with a mailbox at the federal offense. I'll just have to take that chance. I've always wanted to be an executive. This is my opportunity. People under my orders, obeying everything I say to them. You know what? You break open that mailbox and you may get your wish. That prison, they may make you a trustee. Well, I gotta take that chance. Now, wait a minute. If I help you get the letter out of that box and we're both caught, then we both go to jail. Is that right? If I help you get the letter out and we don't get caught, you get the job as traffic manager. What does that get me? What do I get out of all this? 
You certainly have a nerve to say that to me after what I did for you last year. I didn't ask you what I was going to get out of that, did I? Why? What are you talking about? When you had the hot tip and you came downstairs to borrow $10 from me. Well, you didn't lend me the $10. That's just the point. The horse lost, didn't he? <laughs> I guess you're right, Ralph. Now, we got to figure how to get that thing over. Coming in great. Wait a minute. I got it. Sensational idea. Dynamite. What is it? I just told you, dynamite. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? You can't blow up a letterbox. This thing. Hey, wait a minute. I seen a motion picture once. A guy was trying to get a bundle out of, out of a mailbox. You know, we could do just what he did. Why? Well, he brought this bag of tools with him, see? First thing he does, he takes a mallet out, he hits a mailbox, try to break open the spring lock, you know? Yeah. That don't work, he tries a hairpin. That don't work, he gets a big crowbar, he starts prying open the thing. Well, did he get it open? No, while he was prying it open, the cop came along and shot him. <laughs> what are you telling me things like that for? I didn't know you were so chicken. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got an idea. What? A skeleton case. Ah, that's no good. They got special like rock. <laughs> I got the best idea of all this one really is this. We get my brother-in-law's truck, and we come along the street here when there's nobody here, and we steal the mailbox. <laughs> Not mm. We got to do it. Let's steal it. That's the best thing. Not mm. What? Get your bowling ball. We can't open a mailbox with a bowling ball. Get your bowling ball. <laughs> would, uh, would you two mind explaining to me what you were talking about, huh? <laughs> and tell him what we were talking about. <laughs> Officer, there's a mailbox up there. Uh, uh, you tell him. Uh, now look, look, one of you better start to tell me now. Well, you see, we're playwrights. Uh, we were writing a play, you see. That's You're what it was about. You're writing a what? Yeah, we we write were writing a, play. a little play. Yeah, you know, remember in the third grade, you was a tree? Uh, was shut an... up. <laughs> uh, now, as uh, soon as we get this play written, we'll send you tickets for it, pal. Yeah, yeah. Thank Make you. sure, huh? Yes, sir. To play about a mailbox? Yeah, yeah. we're going to break into a mailbox. Yeah. So we yeah. got little ideas yeah. in the play. <laughs> we'll send you uh, some tickets for it when yeah. it opens. Okay. okay do that, Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> There's the law. Nice fella, isn't he? Yeah. Hey, that was a close shave. Never mind that. We got to get into that mailbox. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? We got to go get the cop. What for? Get his address so we can send him tickets to the play. <laughs> Only I have a bosom friend like this. <laughs> Pulling me back, sir. You moche, you don't want anybody to see us looking at the mailbox, do you? If you're gonna get scared if somebody sees us looking in the mailbox, how are you gonna act if they see us climbing in wood? <laughs> Boy, would I like to drive one right through. <laughs> now look, you stand here, I'll look the box over. If anybody comes, let me know. All right. Somebody coming, Rolf? <laughs> I don't see anybody. I was practicing. <laughs> I just stand here. Anybody comes, just tap me on the shoulder. Somebody coming? <laughs> I gotta get into this mailbox. Just wait a minute, will you? Just will you mind letting me think about it for a minute? Just let me look at the thing. I mean, this is a problem. There must be an answer. The letter goes in there. The letter's got to come out. Maybe I got the answer to the problem. I don't know. You got to use the noodle. Now, wait a minute. I ain't got the answer. What is it? You can't get it out. <laughs> wait a minute. This thing is made just like a piggy bank, ain't it? That's right. What do you do with a piggy bank when you want to get something out? 
You lift it upside down and shake it. Shake it. Come on, pal. Hey, got it. what's going on here? It's a big idea picking up that mailbox. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but now, uh, uh, we weren't picking it up. We were just putting it down. You see, some kids must have come along here and turned it upside down. I, uh, I see. Well, from here, it looks like tampering with the mail. That's a federal offense. You can get three years in jail for that or a thousand dollars fine. How about that, Ralph? You got a choice? <laughs> Come here. Well, there goes my life. Say, what? I hope you won't get mad at me, but I went out to eat and I forgot to put your letter in the mailbox. What? Uh, don't worry, don't worry. You'll get there in the same time. I just gave it to the mailman. <laughs> Terry was busy, Mr. Marshall. I just thought I'd bring in your mail. Oh, here. I'll take those. Well, Ralph, I guess you must be pretty excited about your promotion, hmm? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, uh, Cramden, I suppose you probably want to know what your new duties are, hmm? Yes, sir. Well, you just go down to Bill Johnson's office, sir. He'll show you the ropes. Yes, sir. Well, what is it, Cramden? Uh, do you want to speak to me about something? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to say something to you, Rob. Uh, well, what is it? Sure has been nice weather we've been having right along here. <laughs> is that all you wanted to say to me? No, I uh, wanted to say... Now, look, Cranlon. You look a bit nervous this morning, but I can understand that. Suppose you just sit down there and uh, think over what you have to say to me while I go over my mail, hmm? Mr. Marshall, you dirty boy. <laughs> Brandon, I never read these crank letters. I always file them in the wastebasket. Oh, <laughs> gee, that's swell. However, on second thought, uh, since you're advancing in our organization, I think I'll read it to you to show you the kind of crank letters people send to uh, <laughs> us executives. <laughs> You'll get a good laugh out of this. <laughs> Dear Mr. Marshall, you dirty bum. Huh, can you imagine the mentality of a man who'd write a letter like this? <laughs> <laughs> You're nothing but a miserable lowlife. You want to turn in your membership card in the human race. <laughs> well, that line at least shows a little more clever thought than the average crank uses. Thank you. Uh, you huh? <laughs> After firing me after nine years, I can safely say that you are the meanest man in the whole world, you dirty bum. <laughs> Cramden, do you know how this is signed? It says, respectfully yours, etc., etc." He doesn't even have the nerve to sign his name. I guess the excitement of his promotion was too much for him. <laughs> Alice! Alice! Yeah? Alice, baby. Alice, honey. I just got a 
house in Dallas where the Chinese food is going to be sent up any minute. I got it in the hall. The guy's carrying it up. Well, but you left this morning. You're acting as though the world had come to an end. Yeah, but it ain't coming to an end anymore, baby. Not only have I still got my job, but I still got the promotion. I don't get it. What about the letter? That's just it. On account of Norton's stupidity, I still got my job. How do you think he signed the letter? Respectfully yours, etc., etc. Oh, you mean that Mr. Marshall didn't know it was you? He didn't even know who sent the letter. Ah, <laughs> uh, sweetie, from here on in we live. Oh. From here on in we live. Ralph, I haven't seen you this happy in years. I've never been this happy. You're gonna have everything, <laughs> sweetheart. Hey, what's looking around here? What's looking around here? From downstairs, it smells like Hong Kong Garden. <laughs> Pal of mine, if you were a little prettier, I'd kiss you. <laughs> I want to thank you for what you've done. Hey, wait a minute, Ralph. How'd you find out so soon? I just came from there. Came from where? Well, uh, I got to thinking, uh, matter of fact, I was thinking about it all day, how, how rotten you must feel, and I felt rotten and all about you losing your job, and so right after work, I went right to the bus company, and I saw the president himself, and I talked to him. And I explained the whole thing to him. And I said, uh, you know, I said that you didn't mean all those things that you wrote in the letter about him being a dirty bum, <laughs> miserable low life. I told him, I explained the whole thing. That's the kind of a pal you got, boy. <laughs> and remember, whenever you're in trouble, don't forget, Ed Norton lives upstairs. 